Yes, sir. As you all remember, if you read the paper back on August 12th, we investigated a homicide on Bay Tree Road. Uh, during an homicide, a, a female was found murdered in her house. Uh, I can tell you that uh, when we got over there, uh, our, the folks from the, uh, for the crime lab, our crime scene technicians, our officers, detectives responded there. While we were there, we went up with it, without going into too much detail, uh, we developed at that time some persons of interest in that case. We also collected some evidence uh, from, from that, from the same specifically ballistics evidence and other things. When you do these things, you start, it's like a jigsaw puzzle, you all know that. Uh, <clears throat> we, when we identified those persons of interest, we eventually, that investigation kept going on and on and on, and we ruled out those persons of interest. Quite frankly, we're at kind of at our at wit's end, and we were at a loss of where we would go from there. Not this past weekend, but the weekend before that, uh, some three of our brand new police officers, fairly new officers, respond to a call in, regard, in regards to an individual who uh, uh, was involved in a separate incident, and at, during that incident, there was a weapon that may have been involved. Our officers got into a foot chase, uh, captured this, this individual, uh, and you'll, I'd show him in the paper tomorrow, his name is Jerry Gray. Uh, when we captured that individual, we recovered a pistol from his person. Uh, now, going back to the crime scene on August 12th, uh, some of that ballistics evidence that we got from the scene, in addition to other evidence, we submit already submitted to the crime laboratory. And you all know that in that in our laboratory, the ballistics section is tied into the ATF, their Niven database, which is basically the fingerprint or the, the ballistics version of fingerprints. And uh, but we recover that gun, and then our detective bureau doing what they should do is they're going through reports looking for similarities in crimes and so on. They've always done that. Uh, uh, one of our, one of our uh, supervisors noted that report, noted that the officer had in fact recovered a handgun, recognized the name, and then immediately did a lab submission form, submitted that, that handgun to the crime lab for ballistics testing. This was last Monday. Let me tell you why that's important. By last, this past Friday, we knew we had a, a positive identification in our ballistics section from our lab saying this gun positively was involved or was the gun that was used to kill this woman. That ties us back into this individual that we arrested. Uh, without going into too much more detail because obviously it's pending prosecution now, uh, then our lab folks, our detectives, our officers went over and met with the district attorney's office like they're supposed to do. They all sat down at a round table. We had done some additional interviews after that because now we obviously had another place to go. And I can tell you, as of even tonight, uh, Mr. Hanson, forgive me, but I just found out about this, but as of tonight, we, rec we recovered additional crucial evidence as part of that investigation. And uh, we, as of yesterday, we obtained a uh, felony murder warrant for the individual. Uh, we're also looking at additional charges with those folks. Uh, I shared an email with the, the city manager yesterday because I was moved about how everybody came together and did what they're supposed to do. Uh, but I also want to point out this, and, and, and I said this in an email, and I mean it, I know Frank Simons, if he, if he were up here, he'd say the same thing. That because of that lab, because we have it here, it's unprecedented that we've gotten, we got that turnaround and got that positive identification and gave us a suspect in less than a week. Now, I'm not firing shots at the state labs. Mr. Hanson, you not talked about that. They're hardworking, good folks, but they're behind because they're taking in, you know, they're processing evidence for other folks. If you remember, the intent of the lab when we first did it was that we wanted to, to help us solve crimes, to speed up our, our judicial system, and, and, and I can tell you that's working. We are getting 23 day or less turnaround in all our evidence now. That's fingerprints, that's drug analysis, cocaine, marijuana, whatever, ballistics identification, and I'm proud to say, it's not me, but it's the people that Mr. Hansen mentioned earlier. It's those, those trained folks that get that training and the specialized training and the quality training and the people I think we're hiring, not just in the lab, but in the police department in general, that they know what they're doing, they know how to do their business, and this is just a good example of how that came together. And I can also tell you that, that if you go back and look, thus far, our last two homicides, uh, and I'm sure you'll read the papers and gotten emails from the city manager, our lab has helped us solve those cases. I do want to say this, that that all of you, that uh, I mentioned this in the email, and, and 
I just, I just that's how I feel. It's how our folks feel. We get unprecedented support from you all. If we ask for something to help us solve crime, you give it to us. I can also tell you that, that, that I share the same sentiment that the city manager, I think, with, with all of you, that a lot of the funding from the lab came from SPLOST. And I'm telling everybody, and I sent out a lot of emails today telling folks, you need to help us with this. Public safety needs SPLOST to pass. I'm just up here, Mr. Hanson gave me an opportunity to speak, and I want you all to know how much I appreciate the sport and the patience with us because these things take time. And my entire time in Valdosta, I've never, ever had a problem with that. Chief's always a little low on enthusiasm, so <laughs> <laughs> got to get him built up a little bit. But thank you very much, Chief, for that. And I knew that the council would want to hear that and, and, and share their appreciation for a job well done by the men and women of the BPD. So that's all I have, man.